Weapon overheating is an EFT now, and it is amazing. The heat buildup has various cascading effects on the weapon, and it gives players options to consider when modding the weapon and selecting ammo. The basics. When a shot is fired, the expanding gas and pressure creates heat inside the weapon. The ambient air of the environment and the weapon parts absorb heat. This is shown in EFT by variables. Heat, cooling, durability burn, and durability. Heat is a parameter that is attached to all ammo types and some weapon part types. It is a percentage buff or debuff of how fast this ammo, or part, contributes to the heat added to the weapon for each shot. For example, muzzle brakes have lower heat modifiers, while suppressors have higher heat modifiers. An important note is that all effects of heat affects the root part of the weapon. A suppressor, for example, cannot get damage from overheating. This appears to be a work in progress. I would assume they are working on making individual weapon parts have their own durabilities. The cooling. It affects the ability of parts of the weapon to absorb heat. This might be confused with just being negative heat. However, heat is a variable that shows the percentage of overheating from the invisible base rate. So a weapon with minus 10% heat is not necessarily the same as the same weapon with plus 10% cooling. Cooling is an attribute of the barrel, muzzle devices, gas blocks, handguards, and dust covers. Durability burn. Technically, this could be called melting modifier because it determines how fast the weapon melts down. It reduces the total durability of the weapon. This effect appears to only manifest itself in full auto fire or when using ammo with high durability burn on continuous and rapid semi auto fire and for a very long time. If the durability burn is sufficiently high, it gets reduced at the same or similar rate of remaining durability. I will now show some test videos of various weapons. The test is 150 rounds, split evenly across five magazines. The test you see in the video is the worst out of five tests in terms of malfunctions and durability. Malfunctions are for the most part deterministic. That means malfunctions appear at a very similar spot when running the same test parameters. As I'm firing the weapon, notice the heat mirage and the smoke effects in the barrel. After the third magazine, you can see the barrels start to turn red. The cat in this video lost 4.2% of physical and total durability. If the durability burn is low compared to heat, then the durability loss creates a gap between itself and total durability, which can be repaired. While testing various weapons, I found that some weapons appear to have a hidden variable that determines its mechanical resistance to overheating. And this appears to match with how heavy the weapon is and what materials it is made of. Let's examine the PPSH-41 now. It fires a marginally more powerful pistol caliber. Not a single malfunction. That thing runs like a dog after an ice cream truck, which I think indicates that weapon mass and amount of metal is the primary heatsink. The PPS H41 is an immensely large weapon for a small caliber. It loses 3.8% physical and total durability. Now that we have examined submachine guns, let's examine assault rifles. For this test, I used an AK 74M because my character is level 9 and broke. A 
AK platform rifles have an advantage against overheating built in by the limited rate of fire of 600 to 650 RPM. The AK-74M loses 3.6 durability, no malfunctions recorded. The M4A1 is a good weapon to test the AK-74M against. They can be considered sisters of the Cold War and have similar mass, calibers, dimensions and barrel length. The M4A1 loses 4.2 durability because of its high rate of fire. Now let's examine what a suppressor does for overheating. In 0.12.12, they have a strong heat debuff and wear weapons out faster. I think this was done as a placeholder until they make suppressors have their own durability. Until then, the weapon takes the heat for the suppressor. One thing to keep in mind about durability is that the weapon accuracy gets updated and reduced in real time. So a pristine condition weapon with a suppressor that shoots 1.5 MOA groups at the start of a raid might have serious difficulty hitting something at long distance late in the raid after several overheating situations. This effect is minimal on weapons that start with high durability. However, the VSS used in this video was badly damaged and it was not capable to hit accurately at 300 meters anymore. So, how to avoid overheating? The cheapest way is to avoid automatic fire. It is very hard to create heat buildup with semi-auto fire that would be strong enough to cause a situation that would lead to malfunctions. Because full auto fire melts total durability, there is often no gap between current durability and the maximum which can be repaired. Another fix is to replace the root part of the weapon. On AR-15 weapons, the lower receiver is the root and can be a cost-effective way to reset the condition of the weapon to 100 while reusing the other parts. 